Hey guys, it's Lisa, and welcome to my channel. Uh, today we're going to make uh, some Mother's Day cards, and I know that's kind of an odd thing for a craft channel, uh, but we're going to we're going to get creative with these. And um, Easter is is behind us now, and um, it's time to start thinking uh, on the next holiday, which will be Mother's Day. And I don't know about you guys, but those of you who have stores and um, and booths, um, I do sell a lot of small gifts for Mother's Day. And this card is going to be extra special uh, because it's going to be a gift in itself. Uh, I'm, I'm using an old vintage book, and uh, this is just the book cover. And uh, I'm not worried about the words on it because I'm just going to cover that up. I just like the color of this book. So that's kind of uh, how, I, um, how I choose my books. I just, if I like the look of the cover, then I, I'll use them to make something. And in this case, again, it's going to be a, a, a card. Now, I'm showing you guys how you can make Mother's Day cards. Uh, since that is the holiday that's coming up, but uh, since my mother just passed, I, I'm not going to be giving this as a Mother's Day card. Uh, instead, I'm giving it to a friend uh, as a thank you card. Um, I have a friend who is just, uh, she's just been really good to me lately, and I, I wanted to thank her, and so um, I'm going to make this card for her. So I'm going to be stamping and adding some decoupage to this. So uh, I decided that the napkin that I want to use on this uh, is uh, actually was given to me by this person. So um, I thought it would be good to use on this and it's going to go really well with this color. So the napkin that I'm using again, was given to me by her, and uh, I don't know where she got it. Uh, I haven't been able to find a lot of the napkins that she gives me, uh, but um, but she's, she tends to find some really pretty napkins. Occasionally, I'll be able to find them on, on Amazon. Uh, this particular one, I don't think I've ever seen. I like to tear old book pages, and this is uh, actually part of a, another one of the letters that just had some faint uh, script writing on it, and I'm just kind of using this uh, as part of my decoupage. And some of this napkin, I'm going to want some, uh, some of this book page behind so that it shows up more and then on some of it uh especially around the edges i kind of want it to to uh, just kind of look naturally part of the book so as you'll see uh, i'm using a few different techniques on this and i'm outlining with a um, paintbrush dipped in water where i want to tear this now you have lots of choices here for what you want to add to this. Um, again, we're starting with this uh, book jacket. So uh, that kind of opens the door for a lot. This is going to be very sturdy. So you could glue just about anything you want on this. Um, cloth would be great and, um, and lace. And I will be using some lace. Uh, so... Um, the sky's the limit really when you start with this type of card you can just keep adding and, and make it just as detailed as you want or you could keep it simple if you prefer it simple but I just love the soft look of this napkin and it has so much of this color in it that this is just going to be perfect and I know it doesn't look like much here and you're probably wondering where I'm going with this uh, but um, it, it will just kind of happen as I go, and when I'm happy with the look, then I'll stop. Uh, I don't generally have a certain plan. I just, uh, just start adding until I feel like I've added enough. And again, this doesn't have to be limited to Mother's Day. This could be a friend gift. 
Uh, we do Secret Sister at my church, and I think this would be a, a really good Secret Sister gift. But I think so many times uh, we end up with lots of cards, and uh, we don't know which ones to hold on to. And I actually have a friend who saves every single card she ever got. Um, I don't. Uh, I do save a lot of them. Uh, but but if I got a handmade one like this, I would definitely save it. So uh, so if if you're trying to buy for somebody that you just don't have any idea what they would want, I think this might be a good solution. And I think for those of you who really don't have a place to sell your uh, your items, but you just love to craft, um, these are good to make ahead and have on hand um, when you have someone special that you need to send a card to. Now, I know that some of you uh, watch junk journaling videos and, and do junk journaling. Uh, this is similar to that, uh, except that because I'm not going to have um, more than the one page in this, uh, then I don't need to sew that in. I can just glue it in, and, um, and that makes it a lot quicker. And here I'm just tearing out uh, some of the little uh, the little flowers when I want a single flower. I don't want at this point to put the water around this because I'm afraid the water will spread too thick, and then it uh, will make my little image bigger than I wanted to tear it. So that's why I'm tearing it without water here. Uh, but because this is one that I want to show up well, then I'm gluing it to a book page uh, that doesn't have any any print on it, and uh, and then I'll glue it on that way, and that will help that to show up better. And I'm just playing with the placement here. Um, again, I don't have any particular plan. I'm just uh, deciding as I go. Now, generally, I don't use gloss Mod Podge, uh, but my friend Paula brought some that she bought by accident, and I thought I would use it up. My plan at first was just to glue it on with this and not put it over the top, but at some point, I decided to go ahead and just start putting it over the top because I'm going to be doing some distressing on this afterwards with some fine grit sandpaper, and I'll lose a lot of that luster. Uh, but I kind of like the extra protection on this, and I didn't mind where there was some shiny. And sometimes I just like to use what I have, and that's what I had. And uh, if I if I I decided if I got a look that was too shiny, then all I had to do would be to go over this with a flat top coat. And that would get rid of the shine. So that's why I was brave enough to do this before I was absolutely certain that I didn't mind that shine. Again, my reason for doing this today is just to give you guys some other options when you don't have somewhere to sell your items. And even those of us who do sell our items, uh, we, we need sentimental gifts every now and then that we can just give as a gift. So... Um, so I think this works for us also. I'm so loving all the hang tags that you guys have been sending. And uh, I've started putting them on the wall. And when the wall gets a little bit more full, I'll, I'll show you the wall. But what I did on it was uh, just added almost like a collage of lace. And that gave some interest to the wall until I do get it full. So, uh, I'll be showing that um, as soon as I get enough to where it doesn't look empty. Now, you don't have to just decoupage with a napkin here. You could decoupage with uh, some clip art from a book. And, and then you wouldn't have to layer it over the top of the book page like I'm having to. So, um, I just liked having both that translucent look and the solid look. Um, and I like the warmth of the, bu the book page behind it. 
Uh, and I'm antiquing around the edges of most of this. I'm not antiquing around the um, napkin pieces, but most of the other pieces I will. Now I'm just covering this title up here, and then I'm going to be doing some layering over the top of that. This is where you can just you can use some of your stamps. Uh, most of my wooden stamps were either uh, purchased uh, at a thrift store or uh, given to me by my sisters uh, because I don't generally order online um, the wooden stamps because uh, I like the clear stamps that I can uh, use on items that aren't flat. Uh, the only exception to that is uh, my scripture stamps because those are hard to find in the clear stamps. And Hobby Lobby has a pretty good selection of those. So if you're having a hard time finding the scripture stamps, check with Hobby Lobby. Uh, also, Amazon has several. So just look up scripture stamps. It will bring up a lot of those. Uh, but that's the only thing, the only wooden stamps that I buy new. Uh, but when you're using a wooden stamp, if uh, you want to use it on something that isn't flat, just stamp it onto a uh, piece of paper or um, stamp it onto just the, the uh, layer of the napkin that doesn't have any print on it. And then you'll be able to... Uh, just decoupage it onto the item that you want to use it on. Now, if you don't want to make a card here, uh, and you have just a vintage book that you like the color of the outside, or even if you don't like the color of the outside, obviously it can be painted. Uh, but uh, what I do when I find a book like this that I like the color of, and I'm not making a card out of it, I just decorate it as a book to just kind of lay around for decor. I think I have one in one of my videos that I did that way. But I just really like the idea of, um, of just making a handmade card with these. And then it's a good sturdy card. And um, you don't feel like you're just giving them a card. It feels more like a gift. So now that the outside is finished, uh, then I'm going to start on the inside. And uh, just because I like the look of it, I'm going to take some vintage lace and uh, use it to tie the book closed. So I want that to stay in place well. So I'm just going to take one long strip of it and just glue it in the center first. And then because I want to hide that um, the mess there in the center then I'm just taking a strip of uh, fabric and I think I just used muslin fabric here and I'm going to glue that down over the top and now that uh, that ribbon will or that lace will stay in place and then I'll also glue it flat against the front and back cover. And because I want to hide this mess here in the center, I'm just going to cut a strip of fabric, or I have cut a strip of fabric here, and I'm just going to glue it with some fabric glue um, down over that. And that will, again, hide that mess uh, and, and give this a better look. And then I'm just going to take a piece of uh, parchment paper and fold it in the center and tear around the edges because I don't want the edges of the pages to be straight. I want them to have uh, more of an organic look. So I'll just tear them around the edges and add some of the antiquing ink. And that will uh, give this more of a vintage, um, kind of a junk journal look. Which is what I'm going for. So then once I get this antiqued around the edges, then I'm going to uh, glue it just to the the base of the back cover, if that makes sense. Uh, so um, I just glue just that very uh, folded edge there, the back of that folded edge to the very inside edge of the back cover. 
that was my plan at first and then I decided to go ahead and glue that whole back page against uh, the back cover. And then after I glued that edge on, then I took some more lace and kind of layered over the top of it to just to make it hold better and to give that a better look. And I think that as you're doing this, your project will just kind of tell you what it needs uh, as you do each step. And I'm using a combination of liquid fabric glue here. Uh, and hot glue, just whatever I feel like at the time will hold better or look better. Some of the thicker items you can use the hot glue on, but on the thinner items, obviously you want to use um, the uh, liquid fabric glue. And here I'm just using some washi tape just to kind of hold that in place before I lay that down. And uh, that was just kind of an added step that I don't think was necessary at all because when I glued that on, I really wasn't sure I was going to put the lace on. So the lace would do the trick without having to use that washi tape at all. Now again, if you were doing a junk journal with this, then you would need to sew that what they call a signature in. But, uh, but this is just a card so that none of that is necessary. As you can see, that tied vintage lace there just adds a really special touch to it. Now, when I, t when I uh, tore my parchment paper to fit, or folded it to fit in and then had to tear around the edges, uh, then my pages were actually not quite as wide as I wanted them to be, as you can see here. Uh, so that just gives me an opportunity to add another special touch to it. So I'm just going to add some vintage lace to the edges of each of these pages. And I'm choosing to do it from the inside of the page rather than the outside of the page. Again, that's just a personal preference. Uh, you can do it either way, whatever you think looks best. Uh, either one would work. So after I get that glued on, I decide that I want uh, to kind of trim that out even. So I took some of the lace from uh, the Dollar Tree, the thin lace, and glued that uh, down each of those, um, each of the wider pieces. Now again, I use parchment paper here, but you could use vintage paper. I think that would be even prettier. And because I used the parchment paper, I did antique around all those edges to make it look older. So I do this on both sides, and then, uh, and then my pages will be complete. And then I can just write my message on it and uh, do any stamping that I want to stamp on it. Uh, I do have some floral stamps that I'm going to be adding, and I'm going to add just little bits of this same decoupage paper. Well, not decoupage paper. Actually, this same napkin. Um, I'll add just a touch of that on the inside to kind of bring it all together, but then I'll, I'll leave lots of space for a message. Now, obviously, you don't want to take this kind of time for just any card that you send. But uh, to those extra special pe people in your life that you want to uh, really go all out on, then uh, this will work great. And I'm excited to show you guys another hang tag that I got in the mail today. So at the end of the video, I will show that. So now at this point, I'm just kind of going over it and uh, adding any little touches that I feel like it still needs. I'm just gluing some of these loose edges down and then I decide that I want to hide that raw edge of the fabric there with another piece of this vintage lace. And after I get this added, then, uh, then I decide that that front page needs something. 
So I just stamped, uh, did some stamping on it and some stamping on the inside cut or the front inside cover. Uh, and then uh, that was enough to uh, just kind of bring all this together, I felt. And then now all I need to do is write my message on the inside. Now I could make a an envelope for this. I didn't make one, uh, but you could definitely take it a step further and make an envelope. Obviously it would have to be more of a heavy duty envelope. But I just really love how this turned out. This is so my style. Now if you don't have uh, a vintage book cover or you just don't want to make one out of a, of a vintage book cover, then there's always cardboard. So um, I'm going to make one next, uh, a little bit more simple one out of just cardboard. And I'll use uh, another napkin that this same friend gave me uh, to decorate this one. Now I have this cardboard and it's, it's sturdy enough without being too thick to cut. So I just cut two pieces the same size, but I don't want that uh, that straight cut. I want this to have a really vintage rustic look to it. So I'm taking my scissors and just really, really, really scraping the edges of that and really putting some pressure on it because uh, I want it to be really rough on the edges and I just really like that look so I'm going all the way around both of these like that uh, before I start this. So once I get that roughed up as much as I want it then I'm just going to punch a few holes here and I'm just kind of eyeballing, eyeballing this. Obviously the back one you're not going to be able to eyeball that so what I do is I just put it right over the top of that one and then I just take a little pen and just mark put a dot in each of these that way I'll know exactly where I need to punch those other holes. So once I get those all punched uh, then I don't want just this cardboard look so I'm just going to take some uh, white chalk paint and I think I use the color fluff here. You just need a light color and I'm just going to uh, just going to um, paint that not even getting full coverage. I'm just going to get a little bit on my brush and brush both the front and back of both of these. Again, I don't want full coverage here. And then once this dries, then I'm going to take my antiquing ink and really antique around those edges. And then I'm going to make the inside page the same way or the inside pages the same way that I did on the book. And then I'll trace the, these holes the same way I did with that back piece. And then again, these pages will also get uh, that antiquing ink around them. Now I'm not going to be adding lace to these pages though, because this is a this is more of a simple card, and I don't want the inside to to be showier than the outside on this. And I kind of like this rustic look on the outside. Now here is that other uh, nap napkin that my friends gave me. And uh, again, I don't know where she finds these, but this one was just gorgeous. So I wanted to use this on this card. And this kind of has that Mother's Day look to me for some reason. Maybe it's the pink flowers, but it kind of made me think of Mother's Day. And this one's going to be getting some stamping with some, some of my script stamps. And I'm not using black here because I felt like it would be too harsh for this card. So I'm using Stays On ink, but this is the color Timber Brown. And it's almost black, but not nearly as harsh. So I'm just kind of stamping a background before I add uh, parts of this napkin. I will be adding a large part of this napkin, but I want to make sure that where I don't have it covered, that I have some interest in that area also. And then I'm just going to start decoupaging with that napkin. And I don't want the entire thing, 
but I do want uh, the biggest part of it. So I'll just kind of tear where I want that and then decoupage that on the front. And again, I just love this napkin so much. I love these colors and I love the image on it. Uh, I love birds and flowers. Uh, it's just me all the way. Now, obviously, I'm removing that those back layers and just uh, decoupaging the front layer with the image on it. And I'm just playing with the placement here because I don't want to cover that whole front up. So I just put the glue where I want the image and just kind of add it a little at a time until I get it where I want it. Now, obviously, you don't want to do too much moving this around because once you get it in place with that glue, it's really hard to remove it without tearing your image. And this is one that I definitely don't want to tear. I wish I had time to do all of my cards this way. I would, I would never buy a green card if I had the time to do this. I think this is just so much more personable. Although you don't want to have to move this around too much for fear of tearing it, if you do tear it somewhat, it's not a huge deal because uh, we're kind of going with this organic look and this rustic look. So if it's not perfect, that just kind of adds to it. Now I'm going to be stamping uh, Mom on the front. Uh, and I, I did uh, buy this little set last year. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I bought this little set last year on Amazon uh, when I needed it for some junk journaling for my brothers and sisters when Mom passed. And uh, so I still have all these Mother's Day um, stamps. But again, just handwrite if you don't have the stamp set. And I know that my mom personally would have appreciated it being handwritten more anyway. So I stamped this in the uh, timber brown also, but I still felt like it needed some warmth added to the word mom. So I just used a Sharpie uh, that had some of this muted pink in it and just kind of warmed up that a little bit. But apparently, I did that after I bound these together. So, I just took some of that vintage lace, actually a thinner vintage lace, and I'm going to tie these together. Uh, so, um, I just tied them in a knot. And when you tie them together, you want to make sure that you, uh, that you tie them very loosely. You want to, because if you tie that too tight, when you go to open it, it's not going to open well. And uh, you, so you want to have, uh, leave these a little bit longer, if that makes sense. I thought about tying them in a bow, but um, it just was too much. And um, I decided to just, tie them in a loose knot. So now I'm just using some of my stamps and just adding some decorative touch to it. And this is on the inside where, where you can write your message. And then on that front page, I'm gonna stamp a larger um, rose pattern. But first I'm gonna put mom on there. And I'd gotten some of these stamps uh, in a set and uh, I think I got these on Amazon uh, sometime last year uh, so just look up Mother's Day stamps and you'll get some of those little and these were very inexpensive uh, not this rose this rose was one that I thrifted but as you can see that makes a cute little card and we just started with cardboard Here's where I'm uh, warming up that color with the marker. So uh, another way, if you don't want to go to this much trouble Eve, even, but you want to uh, have it somewhat handmade, just take a little uh, blank thank you card or a blank card of any kind and just kind of go over it with your own art. So I just layered up a book page and a stamped page 
and then on this back you'll need of course to cover up that little place there in the in the back so or you could cover the back all together but that's just a simple way to make one and i hope i've given you guys some ideas on uh something extra special that you can do to add to your mother's day gift and this would also work for father's day as you can see there, all I did to that third card is just add some script stamping on that flap. And now I'm going to show you guys a couple of hang tags from viewers that I got in the mail today. And the first one is from Gracie Redfield, and she's from California. And I just love this little card. I love that she packaged it in that little tissue paper roll. Uh, I thought that was just perfect, and I love buttons and lace and all these uh, soft colors. This one is, is just beautiful. You guys just really amaze me with the talent in, in these, and you wouldn't think you could show so much talent in such a small project, but, uh, but it really shows uh, that you guys have an eye for it. And this next one is from Laurel Tobiason in Vermont. And I just love her little envelope. I think this is, her envelope is just as pretty as her card. I love that little raised ladybug on there. It's just such a pretty envelope. And then when you open it up, the card inside is beautiful also. And I love that she used uh, two different layers to this hang tag. Uh, I think that, that adding that little extra uh, hang tag on the top just adds so much. I'm just so thankful that you guys are taking the time to make these and send them in uh, because I'm enjoying looking at them so much and I'm enjoying being, being able to share them with all of you. And I can't wait to show all of these on my hang tag wall. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening and God bless you and your family.